This week, we have Rome the Bears fan joining us. He's part of Windy City and Zone.Football, and he's a writer there, posts some articles, great guy. This is the NFL, and Fields hasn't, you know, he was out last year for a game. It, who knows if he can get injured and what, and wouldn't you know it, next game he gets injured, and agent's in, and now he's starting a full game against uh, the Raiders. And the kid showed up to play. It was actually pretty impressive. I thought it was more of what we saw from from preseason. So, what do you guys think Tyson's Bages' performance against the Raiders means for Bears fans overall moving forward? And you know, I know Fields' potential is very high, but does Bages maybe have a higher floor? I, I think the answer to your questions are down the road still. <laughs> you know, if we see this kind of consistency throughout the year, um, then I think we can make that call. Um, I, looking at his college career, I mean, he, he was an outstanding player, obviously he had a lot of, he had longevity as well, but I mean, four years and effectively the same system, um, builds a lot of consistency. He did say that, that it was effectively the same system. Um, so I think that, that really helps build his confidence and allow him to make, uh, make plays. And, um, and in this, this last game, I mean, he, it was a it was a simplistic offense. I mean, how many smash smash plays can they call in one game? But uh, but he was able to execute the plays. I think when we look at fields and what we've seen so far, I think the floor has been met. I think we know what the floor is, and I don't think I don't think yeah. he's going to ever get any worse. But that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to get better. Right. So we know what the floor is, and. Potentially, he is a backup quarterback with spot starts, and he'll have some special games, right? And that that is ideal for this type of production that we've seen so far. What you see, though, is just a smarter, more uh, professional, like a professional quarterback, is what I see when I see him play. Um, for a rookie to look as just smooth and simple, hitting guys in pockets where they can make a catch and run after the catch. Hitting, throwing balls into places where if my guy doesn't catch it, no one catches it. I think that's really impressive to see with a rookie. So um, the floor for Tyson Bajan is way lower than Fields. Tyson Bajan could be out of the league within the end of the year. So the floor for Tyson Bajan I don't think is higher than Fields. I think Fields is going to be in the league for five to ten years regardless. He'll bounce around. He'll have backup jobs. He'll have guys that believe in him and his talent and all that stuff. But having said that, I do see something in Bajent that really kind of gets me excited. I've seen it since like game one. And I think for me and Paulie, like really, we started talking about Tyson Bajent preseason week one. I remember seeing just like 17 snaps and being like, this kid might have it. He just gets it. He just gets football. He's tough. Um, I just think that this kid is going to work hard. And if he, he's out of the league, it's due to lack of physical skills, not because he's not working hard. And you can say that about a lot of guys, but um, I like the potential for him at this point, almost more than fields. But the floor to answer that specific question is definitely lower for Bajan. I think he got it backwards. Um, and, and I'll tell you why. I, like the reason fields is potential is through the roof. And we saw it with a thousand yard rushing season something that very few guys have done in this league. And then look at this here. He had two back-to-back -back games throwing for four touchdowns. So that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about his ability to run and the ability to pass, but it's all got to come together. And, Rome, I think you hit the nail on the head when you talked about consistency. That's what Fields has been lacking, this consistency. But it's year three now. It's the first 300-yard game we've gotten from Fields, and it's year three, 300-yard passing game, right? So – that's where I'm a little concerned. You know, after the first two weeks this year, I kind of said, man, I just didn't think the floor on fields would be this low. I thought at least he'd be able to keep it together and not be sitting here throwing multiple picks at the end of the game and whatnot. And, you know, granted, he, he cleaned it up. It started looking better. You know, this season's already lost, though, due to that poor, bad start. I mean, you don't go 0-3, 0-4 in this league and wind up making the playoffs. It just doesn't no. happen. With Bajan, you know, I felt like we saw what we saw in preseason, and then he gets into the Raiders game, and it's consistent. You still see more of the same. You see quick release on the ball. You know, I mean, like you said, David, his he might be limited by his deep ball, by his physical limitations. We saw some pretty sloppy deep balls uh, when he came in when Fields got injured. Um, and then last game, they even put in Nathan 
Peterman at, at halftime to try and kind of throw, you know, a, a deep bomb. Maybe they just don't trust his arm. The floor with Bajan, I, I think I've seen – listen, I, I haven't seen anything special, but what I've seen is consistent. You, you say these guys have come and gone in this league. I, yeah, it's it's because they're not really appreciated much. Like, you look at a guy like Alex Smith, and the 49ers moved on from him to try and get lightning in a bottle – with Colin Kaepernick, you know, and that's why the guys with the higher potential wind up bouncing around in some of these backup jobs, because if they are to come in for a game or two, you you know what you're going to get from a guy who just dinks and dunks all game. And it's kind of, it can be a little bit easier to game plan for. So coaching comes into play, to be honest with you. I think with a quarterback like Tyson Bajan, you really need the right staff to sit here and develop them, run the right plays, run, right. you know, run a smooth offense. And that's where, I kind of lose my confidence in the whole thing because I'm not sure how how capable this coaching staff is to take a quarterback like that and be able to succeed with him. I, I almost think they need a guy who can be better than, you know, to cover up their mistakes. It is what yeah. it is. Quarterbacks can do that. What does Tyson Bagent being good or competent mean for the Bears as a franchise moving forward? And to build off your last point, here is the problem with Tyson Bajan being good because for a second, I couldn't find one. The reason it's a problem is because if Luke gets, handpicked Tyson Bajan and was like in love with this guy, for all we know, this guy will only work with some guy like Luke gets. So wherever Luke gets, goes next year, an undrafted free agent is just going to get signed and picked up and go to that next team as the third string quarterback, rather than stay here with a new regime. So that's the one problem where Tyson Bajan being competent in Luke Getze's system is a problem. If you like go back and you watch a Green Bay offense two years ago with Luke Getze there and Matt LaFleur, it does look similar to, similar to what Tyson Bajan did, right? So that is what the, the negative is. The positive, because it took me so long to find negative, is that realistically, if Tyson Bajan does transcend scheme fit and is just a good quarterback or at least a solid quarterback, there's no issue here. There's no problem with Tyson Bajan being a good player. This is one of those times where too many cooks in the kitchen is almost a good thing because none of the cooks are good. So Justin Fields getting his fifth-year option picked up, Tyson Bajan becoming the, the backup quarterback, and then whoever you draft in the first, second, or third round for the next regime or whatever, that is, that is a fine quarterback room. You have a four-year starter. You have a second-year starter with tons of plays and tons of experience, a four-year college starter, record holder. And then you've got your young guy that you can work on as a project. That gives you another year to, for Ryan Poles, buy you time and an interesting quarterback room, which I prefer because I don't necessarily think that old quarterbacks transcend or translate into mentors. I think just Having four, three smart guys in the room who understand a scheme is really what you need. Hopefully Tyson Bajan can basically give the Bears more time to find the guy. If Tyson Bajan's the guy, congratulations, you are one of the luckiest two right. teams in all, all right. of football. And it buys you some, some flexibility to not force draft picks at the quarterback position. You can right. get a King's Ransom for the first or second overall pick, and you can build a wide receiver room. Tyson Bajan throwing to Marvin Harrison Jr. and having Olu Faluashan, I think is this how you pronounce, as a left tackle, I'd be more comfortable with that than Caleb Williams getting his brains beaten in, throwing DJ Moore for 16 games, 17 games. Does this coaching staff deserve to be saved? Because right. if you can make chicken salad out of this, out of this infirmary of a defense from the beginning of the year. And now all of a sudden the defense plays really good. Matt Heberflus looks like a genius. Yeah. If you go 500 with this team full of rookies, guys who six out of the 11 starters were brand new, and you have all this defense that has to mesh and gel midseason throughout the year, I do want to see another year of that defense. If the back eight games – of this season look good with the defense. I do want to see Matt Eberflus back. Unfortunately, I just do. I like the idea of building around Justin still, um, unless again, unless Tyson, you know, decides he's going to, he's going to just drop bombs and turn the team upside down. Um, building around Justin. I like the idea of picking up his fifth year option. You see what the giants did with Daniel Jones and he's a, for 
for all pr intents and purposes, a poor man's version of Re Mitch Trubisky that they signed for what forty million a year, and uh, yeah, they just broke their team for the next four years. That, I mean, that's insane to me. Like, pick up the fifth year option, make sure he's your guy because why not? Um, if he I, wants I mean, to hold we, out, let him hold out. Sure. Yeah, and we know we know Justin Fields isn't like the quarterback isn't the fix to all the problems. It can be a fix to a lot but it's not the fix to all the problems. Listen to ESPN 1000, and all they were talking about was Jim Harbaugh. Should they hire Jim Harbaugh? Would a Big Ten conference right. uh, oh, commissioner hire a guy who cheated in a Big Ten? That's the, dude, and I called in, and I got on the radio. I should actually pull the clip. But, you know, I, I said, listen, first of all, they're talking about Jim Harbaugh like he's a for sure thing, and they're right. they're pitching the scenario in San Francisco a certain way, and not saying that I'm I believe in this, but I go listen, guys, this you could pitch it the complete opposite way. You could sit here and say after Alex Smith finally turned a corner, not that he developed him, after Alex Smith finally figured it out, you got rid of him, you got rid of him for a Colin Kaepernick for a guy who never developed. You went to three NFC championships due to a defense, and we all know what Vic Fangio brings to the table. That defense was. Because of Vic Fangio. And the second Patrick Willis leaves, you you say you're out. You could pitch it that way. You know what I mean? So if John Har uh, Jim Harbaugh is not a for sure thing. And I followed it up with, but you guys are talking about this coaching staff like it's already fired. I go, and they're not. They're not fired yet. David's been extremely critical of the coaching staff since the beginning of the season. I've been a little bit more critical on the players and the execution. But all along the way, we've both – realized and i've even agreed with him too that it the coaching staff's not doing much to help their case you right. know what i mean i'll put more emphasis on the players but it, it's not like the coaching staff's necessarily doing anything good either listen when there's criticism do we'll give criticism when there's praise do we'll give praise a little bit more recently they've put something together a little bit fields right. had two games where he threw four touchdowns back to back the defense has had now two games where they've kept the teams under 15 points that didn't happen for a long time so like you said david maybe they just needed a little bit more time to gel there's still a half a season left here look at what the lions did last year right if this thing winds up turning around and getting some momentum at the end like you said then yes the coaching staff is buying themselves time and it is saving their job this is the city of backup quarterbacks and we, we love them all until we don't and how does Bajan feel similar or different from situations to the past i absolutely love this question and one because the city of quarter of backup quarterbacks is because we don't have a competent starting quarterback <laughs> that's if right. we just had a good starting that's quarterback right. we would not be the city of backup quarterbacks so and how does Bajan? feel similar or different from situations in the past, he feels different, and he feels different in this way. I feel that with most of the coaches we've had in the past, right now our backup would be P.J. Walker. And that's where this feels different. 100%, yeah. This yeah. This feels more like the Seattle situation a little bit, where they pay Matt Flynn, they draft Russell Wilson in the third round and go, wait, 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 wait. This kid can play. Eat the $40 million. Now, we didn't eat. 40 million we ate 3 million gave this kid a backup role because our starter still does have a high ceiling and high potential and i truly believe you pick up fields as fifth year option and you start him every single game through it and give him every single possible chance to prove to you that he can be a starting quarterback yeah listen i hope tyson bajan wins his second game in a row and let the kids sit back down and start grooming them a little bit because that's an opportunity that we as Bears fans have been asking for and haven't been able to have. Like, we've never had the time to be able to groom any kind of quarterback. We might have it now. I don't care if Fields is the guy or isn't the guy. He still has two years to try and prove that. And that will buy you time to be able to groom a quarterback. And that that's something we haven't had here. Like, guys, Jalen Hurts, second-round pick. I believe Drew Brees, wasn't he a second-round pick? Russell Wilson, a third-round pick. Tom Brady, a sixth-round pick. You don't need to be Peyton Manning. You don't need to be pick one overall in the first round. There's plenty of guys out there. Brock Purdy, like you mentioned. I mean, but there's even – there's guys that have success. Kirk Cousins, fourth-round pick. Yeah, guys, you can either play or you can't. Oh, you know, Justin Fields, you pick up his fifth-year option and you finally have a team around him in that fifth year. And what's – I mean, what's the ceiling on that? Darnell Wright is not Tristan Wirfs in the sense of his miracle rookie year, but also you don't have Tom Brady getting rid of the ball and giving you amazing right. stats with Darnell Wright. But Darnell Wright is probably overall the one player on this team that you could plug in on any NFL team and he would probably be a Pro Bowl or an All-Pro. He's the one guy on this team that's just a complete 
like animal by himself. It doesn't matter what team he's on, what scheme he's on. He's just going to figure it out. If Tevin Jenkins doesn't get a second contract, I'm out on this front office. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. If, there you go. If, honestly, yeah. I, I'm out. Like if that's you fair. don't think – if you're handing out this much money to these different players – and you don't give Tevin Jenkins a second contract. I'm out 100%. on this front office. This that is the the fork in the road move that for me, if you don't give Tevin Jenkins a second contract because whatever reason you just don't like him, you don't like his mentality, you don't like right. um me and Paulie had this conversation when Matt Eberflus got hired and this is my issue with them from the beginning. Indianapolis is a nice team full of nice guys. They don't make they don't make <laughs> drama. Mm -hmm. They're a bunch of, you know, they go to church on Sunday and they're a bunch of choir boys and the good teams in the NFL have some personality. They have some divas and you as an adult man need to know how to manage adult men. If Tevin Jenkins is a little bit out there, but he's an absolute animal on the field, figure it out. You know, one of the reasons we've looked bad in the first couple of weeks of the season was because we were losing in the trenches, not only on the defensive side, but on the offensive side as well. Now they've done some shifting around and this and that to try and, you know, they've also had some injuries that forced them to shift around. But what was different this game is clearly a different quarterback and a, a different play style from the quarterback. Now it, this looked very similar to the scheme that they called in week one against green Bay. It did. Uh, it was a lot of short stuff and, and, you know, it was a lot of stuff that fields didn't do well with, but one of the things I noticed is when fields is out there as a mobile quarterback running sideline to sideline, sideline to sideline, sideline to sideline, you're tiring your offensive unit out. And so when you try and then run the ball, they might be out of breath or out of energy. Now with Tyson Bajan, you got this kid stepping up into the pocket, and if he's going to scramble, he's going to scramble up and out of the pocket, and you're not forcing these linemen to follow you around. Could that be something that attributed to the running game being more effective and better this this week? The amount of fucking like chest bumps and head bangs I've seen from the offensive linemen towards Tyson Bajan this week were actually kind of insane and insulting. For a team that's like Fields is our guy, we love his ethic, we love his work, we love this and that. But guess what? They said the same thing about Chase Claypool. And I'm not saying Justin Fields is Chase Claypool. That's insane. But there is a certain thing of like, dude, you're asking us to do things we're not comfortable doing. And additionally, talking about getting beaten on the offensive line, my second favorite offensive lineman on this team going into the season has been out for the whole year. And I miss Braxton Jones. I think your team is even better with Braxton Jones. You need cohesiveness on offensive line. You need a good left tackle, and he's proven to be a top 10 left tackle in this league statistically. You missed Tevin Jenkins for the first four weeks. The only consistent lineman you've had is a freaking rookie. And so you got Cody Whitehair shifting around, snapping, you know, Odell Beckham snaps over his head the whole season. You know, it's a problem. And when you go into this game and you just ask these guys, guys, I need two things. I need a decent pocket, and I'll get rid of it in three seconds. And just run forward and hit hard. Yes, it is refreshing for these guys to hear that. It is. So you're right. It was the Green Bay game plan on repeat. Except Fields just didn't execute it as cleanly. It was a lot of screens. The defense also gave up a lot more points. I mean, that's true. That's and that true. could be it could be chicken or the egg type of thing. But there is also something to not tiring your defense out with third and longs because you messed up first and second downs with bad screen throws and crappy check downs. And, you know, uh, I'm not saying you have to run the ball perfectly for eight yards every first and second down. And then, you know, if everybody ran for four yards every run play, then the league would be incredibly boring, right? Because it would just we just march down the field. It's not how it works. But at the same time, when you mess up first and ten, and you're down to second and 12, I mean, you're just like, for the Bears, wrap that drive up. Like, it's just done. A lot of drives were long drives. Mm -hmm. You're talking about eating up six minutes, eight minutes off the clock. Letting your defense rest up yes. so they can perform at the end. I mean, it, it was it was literally a big glaring difference because I, I do a drive-by-drive. Drive. I do all my videos drive-by-drive. Drive. Usually three-minute drive, four-minute. Like from time to time, you get a six-minute drive. No, this one was like eight minutes, six minutes. You know, maybe there was one that was two minutes, but then eight minutes again. And, they, like, they, they just kept kept it alive. Kept it alive. Kept it going. Very few mistakes. The NFL. That's how you win in the NFL. Mm -hmm. 